Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me Bill and this time we've got part three of our series on oscillators um, and there's certainly going to be at least another part maybe more than that uh, and this time we're going to look at a couple of one transistor designs so let's uh, kick off straight away and go and have a look at the first one. The first oscillator we're going to look at then uh, in this episode is a phase shift oscillator. Um, it's a single transistor oscillator as I mentioned in the intro and here we've got Q1 he's uh, in the mode of a common emitter amplifier um, the output of Q1 taken from the collector through that one microfarad capacitor you can see on the right hand side of the circuit diagram there and then going back to the left from that uh, connection is the feedback loop that goes back and is fed into the base through the three one nanofarad capacitors uh, and that's what gives you the phase difference. Now the transistor I've used for this is just a general purpose NPN you could use something like a 2N222 uh, um, lots of NPN transistors would work just fine. This one that I used uh, measured a HFE of about 140 that's the actual transistor you're going to see on the circuit board. So uh, translated onto a breadboard uh, or my version of it anyway uh, looks like so. Uh, now I'm going to just uh, clarify a couple of things because the only one nanofarad capacitors I'd got were actually 630 volts working so they're physically quite a lot larger than the two larger value capacitors ironically so I've labelled up the capacitors for you there the three yellow ones are the one nanofarad the one microfarad is just tucked away down the bottom there near the yellow jumper and the 100 nanofarad is the little blue um, rectangle up on the top right. Uh, resistors I think are fairly straightforward and the transistor is um, as per those connections they emit a base collector. The line that takes the feedback from the collector back to the start of the capacitors is the orange jumper that runs across the centre of um, the image there and then a uh, power supply comes in top left and for clarity then I've got the output uh, going to the oscilloscope on a yellow trace that's the yellow jumper at the bottom and then a little later on we'll look at what's happening um, between the two or the three capacitors so I've got a, a blue jumper and a green jumper that we're going to look at blue and green traces on the scope uh, for clarity there are the test points yellow on the output and then the blue and the green are taken at the two nodes in between those those three capacitors. So there we go, that's um, all the theory. Uh, let's um, go and have a look at it on the bench. OK, so here we are with the breadboard set up. Not a great deal to see, I'm afraid, other than the picture. Um, here are the three um, phase changing capacitors. There's the transistor there, um, it's just a general purpose NPN as I said. And I've got um, yellow trace of the scope attached here to the output from this one microfarad capacitor. So let's have a look at that output. And you can see there that it certainly um, is a pretty good approximation of a sine wave. Maybe not exactly the right shape, just to give you an idea. On channel 2 I've got my uh, function generator producing a similar frequency um, wave so I'll just put that on now I'm going to just tweak the frequency slightly so it sort of um, stops somewhere in here and I'll just try and pause the scope fairly close to it so you can see so there you go yeah um, considering you know that's uh, just one transistor um, it is producing a pretty good example of um, a sine wave, I think, and you can see compared to the one produced by a modern function generator there that that's uh, yeah, it's not too bad. A little bit chunky at the top of the waveform. Um, so let's get rid of that again. So yeah, it's that's doing um, pretty good really. So what I'm now going to do is just reduce the amplitude of that a little bit, and we'll move that trace. Um, well, we'll start the scoper in again, that would help. And we'll move the trace up to the top. Uh, and now what we'll do, if we look back on the board again, uh, this orange wire is the feedback, uh, if you like, from the collector to the uh, 
set of capacitors that feed the base of the transistor. So between these first two capacitors here we've got the blue trace um, so we'll pop that on. Now I wouldn't worry too much about the shape of the waveform but if you look where the bottom of the waveform is you can see that um, it is uh, lagging behind it slightly uh, as you would expect and if we now go to the green trace um, we should be able to see a third, I'll just move that down a little bit for you. Um, again if you look at the bottom of the trace a little bit of noise on that, let's just do the run stop. Um, again you can see the bottom of the waveform is actually um, a little bit um, further back and obviously if we went to the um, third place at the base of the transistor we would see um, a corresponding um, uh, lag uh, of, a, of a similar mount. So that's that's the phase shift in uh, in real life. So let's just quickly go back to the circuit and recap on what we're seeing there. Just to review what we've seen on the bench then there, here's the circuit that you were looking at with the three um, test points in appropriate colours. Um, here's the output waveform, I think you'll agree that's a pretty good um, approximation of a sine wave. It isn't exactly right but it's not bad. Um, and just for comparison purposes I showed you with the signal generator, let's have a, just have another look at a screen grab of that. The purple trace there is the output uh, of a function generator um, which should theoretically produce a more perfect waveform and I think the bottom of those waveforms that this oscillator is producing are, are pretty good. The top of the um, waveforms are maybe a tiny little bit chunkier but it's, it's pretty good. I think if you'd got um, a transistor signal generator um, back in the analog days, you'd have been more than happy with that as a as the output uh, to call it a sine wave. So yeah, it's pretty good. And finally, the phase difference again. Yellow trace is the output, and uh, the blue trace and the green trace are those two test points between the three capacitors. So you can see the phase is gradually being shifted backwards from the first node to the second node and obviously the third node at the base of the transistor would have been moved back uh, by a similar amount. So there we go, that's phase shift for us later. Let's move on to the next one. OK, well there's the first of the one transistor designs. Um, let's now have a look at the second one and I'm going to leave you with an incredibly minor cliffhanger here uh, because this um, is a transistor with a difference. Okay, to put you out of your misery, uh, the transistor or single transistor in question is a little bit different to normal ones. It's the unijunction transistor. Now I've done a video on unijunction transistors, so I'm not going to uh, get into the details of that uh, again here. You can refer to that video if you're interested. You don't see too many of these in circuits these days. They were very popular in the uh, in the 70s and 80s, um, so they are a bit of a heritage semiconductor perhaps you might want to call them. So here's the circuit, it's incredibly simple and uh, unijunction transistors have the uh, unique ability to produce a, uh, a sawtooth or a ramp waveform if you like. So uh, obviously a circuit as simple as that lays out on the um, breadboard very simply. Um, blue uh, square component is the 100 nanofarad capacitor, everything else I think is self-explanatory. I'd better apologise for the appalling state of that 47 ohm resistor on the right there which is losing its uh, its um, coating but that is uh, definitely a yellow violet black which is 47 ohms. I um, think I've had those resistors many many years and uh, they've been in a circuit or two on breadboards so maybe I should consider retiring that one uh, gracefully before it uh, uh, creates any more embarrassment. So let's um, let's take two readings from it. So the yellow uh, fly lead and the blue fly lead. We're going to look at the uh, what's happening on the emitter, and we're also going to look what's happening on uh, the lower of the two bases, which is base one in this case. So let's go and have a look at that on the breadboard. Okay, here we are then. Um, as per the description just now, transistors there got the 100 nanofarad capacitor there and the various resistors across the top. It's a very, very simple layout. And I've got yellow trace attached to the emitter and blue trace is attached to base 1. But let's first of all have a look at the uh, display and that's what's happening at the emitter. 
and you can hopefully see, I'm going to just pause it for a second, you can hopefully see there that there's that gradual rising up of the ramp which is the classic uh, indication of a capacitor charging up and that's the um, 100 nanofarad capacitor charging up uh, and then it reaches a point where it very quickly discharges and then the charging cycle um, starts all over again let's set it running again now let's have a look at, uh, at base one which is the blue trace and I'll pause it again stop all the wobbling just so you can see it better so as you can see at base one we've got this uh, very strongly going positive pulse um, again from uh, zero volts upwards and obviously at base two you'd have a, a negative going pulse should you so desire it so um, this rather handy uh, ramp waveform that you get or sawtooth waveform that you might want to call it um, waveform that you get from the unijunction transistor um, has a number of applications uh, they're not particularly uh, popular transistors these days but of course one of the applications would be in uh, uh, a time-based circuit for moving let's say the the dot across the screen on an oscilloscope something like that and it needs to return very rapidly so you could certainly uh, use it for that and those very short duration pulses have also got a um, uh, their uses too. So this circuit is oscillating according to my uh, oscilloscope at about 283 Hz so sort of just over 250 Hz something like that. So there we go that's the unijunction transistor oscillator. Okay well there you've got it two uh, one transistor oscillators a conventional junction transistor oscillator and the unijunction transistor oscillator. Hope you've found that useful. Um, certainly going to be a, a part four, possibly even a part five. We'll see how we get on. Thanks very much indeed for watching and look forward to seeing you on the next video.